Oh, crikey, look at that. That's intriguing. We've got StreamYard branding all over the place. That's novel. <laughs> the StreamYard live show. That's weird. I wonder what's going on there. So we use... Um, Have you not paid your bills again? No, that's <laughs> really strange. So we use... I mean, I don't make no secret of it. I don't try and hide anything. But we use StreamYard and... Um, one of their one of their features is you can sort of swap the branding around and so on and so forth. So I'm just wondering why it's showing all of that stuff. Let me just press. Well, it that wasn't there a moment ago. Yeah, yeah, there we go. So I pressed. I think I oh, pressed the wrong button. In all honesty. Yeah. Any, anyway, <laughs> here we are. We are, we're on live via Streamyard. By the way, um, this is no affiliate mention or anything. I don't know if they have an affiliate scheme or anything. But if you are looking to go live on Facebook and so on, I would highly recommend Streamyard. Uh, you'll have just seen there, look, that that dock symbol is what you're looking for, streamyard.com. It's really cool, dead easy. You can't do anything wrong on it. It's impossible to do anything wrong at all. Uh, it's not – you can't <laughs> do anything. There's no way that it's possible to – anything could to go wrong. It's so easy to use. Lovely. Brilliant. Right. Anyway, hello. We're back with the usual comedy of errors at the beginning and joined this week by three gentlemen over. Oh, I'm going to get it wrong. No, I'm not. I'm going to get it right. Over the first on that time. <laughs> yeah, no, it wasn't. I was going that way and then I just turned it around. We have Bernard Grinot. Introduce yourself, Bernard. Yeah. Uh, well, I'm helping out with pots and doing some uh, custom stuff with my own freelancing, whatever business you might call it, and then selling hot chocolate, but not at the current moment. You must tell us about this. If you feel comfortable, tell it, because you have a completely different side, don't you? Like, are you is it a chocolate business? or? A... Yeah. <clears throat> Together with my brother, we are selling Belgium hot chocolate, mm. mainly uh, to businesses. So everything is shut down, mm. nothing at all. Uh, I mean... Luckily, it's off season, so it's it's summertime. So people, I think it's effective five or six, like winter to 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 autumn to to then uh, to summer. So it doesn't hurt us that much, but still, you lose out on money and you have ongoing costs. Yeah, I, I mean, sorry, sorry. Yeah, just ask. I was just going to say, I wonder how many people are kind of stocking up thing fun things to do when finally the lockdown is you know permanently lifted you know things like hot chocolate for example or just get the ability to access things like the swimming pool or the beach you know all these things which you're suddenly going to do and when it finally comes back online Bernard make sure you've got a warehouse full of hot chocolate because uh, <laughs> it's the sort of thing that's <laughs> suddenly going to be in vogue again the hotels will open and boom there'll be hot chocolate needed everywhere um I was just going to point down here. This is, we've got something <laughs> new. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good look at that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Down, you press up. Um, we've got somebody new. Got Johnny, Johnny Albert from, um, from the UK. I confess, this is the first time we've met. So this is going to be new to me. If you tell us who you are and whatnot, that would be great. Sure. Uh, my name is Johnny. Um, I basically am a custom theme designer. I've been working with WordPress for about 15 years ish a bit more than that now actually um do a bit of tech speaking co-organizer of wordpress birmingham meetup which we've now moved online uh, you should catch it it's cool um and interesting fact is i am a fairly recently qualified commercial drone pilot <laughs> nice. Ooh. is there an actual license then like are you allowed to pick like for example if i went to the shop and just bought one am i allowed yeah. to in any way fly it without oh, any yeah absolutely absolutely yeah uh, there is a drone code to follow uh, which is easy to find google drone code so yeah there's some common sense legal requirements but yeah you can just go and buy one from a toy shop and fly it the difference is um the license allows me to shoot commercial images and footage and that kind of stuff as a as a hobbyist someone who just maybe buys one from a shop um or builds it themselves as i do um you're not legally allowed to essentially charge for the media you create okay. and it can't be used for commercial purposes so that's all the license does and teach you a load more legal stuff and makes you feel like a fighter pilot because you suddenly have to learn all about weather stuff that proper pilots have to learn about but yeah it's cool it was interesting because you paused after after saying the word shoot. 
Yeah. Did you notice that? And you said, it allows me to shoot. No, he said, yeah. shoot commercial. Yeah, that was it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> on them. This is something I didn't, I can see why you need a license. Uh, wow. yeah. <laughs> so thank you. Thanks for joining us. 15 years, man. You were, you were there right at the beginning, really right at the beginning. Uh, yeah. As a smaller side on that, um, what is kind of weird thinking back just very very briefly is um i helped co-organize the first word camp in the uk back in 2008 and at that point i remember standing up and saying i've been working with wordpress for three years and i thought that was a long time so yeah. now i really do feel like i've been working with it for a while <laughs> oh well that's great though good to have somebody on who's got like 15 years under the belt that's wonderful thank well, you for joining it, us it's just a number it doesn't mean i'm good at it <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah i can totally sympathize with that and my number is way smaller than yours so uh yeah uh and yes gonna get it right here we go the, the regular paul lacy yeah. regular as clockwork there regular. he is how are you regular. doing it's all based on the diet <laughs> yeah. oh dear Thanks it's the new laughing. keto diet yeah 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 <laughs> how uh, are you doing yeah. I'm all right, yeah. Paul here, uh, co-founder of the Dickie Bird Studio, which is a WordPress agency in the UK. I'm also a uh, brand ambassador for RunCloud. And now I'm saying that I'm the co-founder of the official UK Matt Medeiros fan club. Oh, nice. Mm -hmm. I like it. I see. The other co-founder does not wish to be named. <laughs> <laughs> it's not Matt Medeiros, is it? It could be. Yeah, it could be. Yeah. <laughs> we're not, we're not sullying his reputation. My um, uh, I can I can, um, I can vouch that Johnny is very good at WordPress, though. Uh, he does exactly. know what he's doing. But That's I do have a question good. about drones. Um, as a commercial drone pilot, you know when all those drones were like causing havoc at airports and uh, stopping it, the, and they were talking about um, getting birds to try and make them knock them out the sky. Is there like a gun drone that can shoot other drones <laughs> that, or like like? you know, laser zap them with a blast of electric you know, Yeah, good, uh, good question. That sounds like a nice You know, it's a really, really sensible question. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. At, the, uh, at the end of the day, um, there's, there's, there's all kinds of strange inventions coming out after all, all that apparent drone scare, which uh, there was no evidence for, incidentally, but let's not get into that. Yeah. Um, yeah, uh, the the way to take out a drone is to interrupt the radio signal, basically. Um, okay. So, and it's kind of invisible. It's not a big laser gun. I'd prefer the laser gun approach. I, I'm yeah, up just for that. a big. Yeah, just, yeah. Whoo, <laughs> cut it in half. <laughs> <laughs> the batteries are quite explosive as well. If you do stuff like it, that, which I've discovered, so that's good fun as well. So yeah. you get quite a good little explosion. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. yeah lipo batteries go up real nice in fire. No, <laughs> <laughs> have to be a bit careful. Yeah. Uh, every, every week it's the same. We go totally off message. It's absolutely fabulous. I love it. It's his um, Yeah, it is. His fault. You, did you see the way Johnny seamlessly pointed in the right direction without a thought? He said it's his fault and just yes, straight. In. Wow. Man, that would have taken me like weeks of brain power. Yeah, it's the wrong way. Yeah, but I'm pointing. I'm yeah. Like, so it's, Johnny, you nailed it. Johnny's. I think said. No, I, I'll be honest. No, I cheated. I um, I subtly scratched my shoulder first to check which side <laughs> it was. Yeah. <laughs> this Absolutely. is why he's allowed to fly drones. He's clearly <laughs> cleverer than we are. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, look, yeah, I can point at myself, but that's about it. So, um, Leo Mindell says oh, hello, good afternoon, all. Thank you for joining us, Leo. Max, I don't know that I've come across Max before. Max um, Zeibel just says hi hello max nice to have you um hello george hello from cyprus lovely nice. thanks for coming along and heinrich who i know to be in ireland unless anything's changed recently says hi all chris in the uk hello um vito who's also in the uk is saying hello and we've got peter wow must be up early or oh, maybe not connecticut no probably not uh, but hello anyway thanks for making the effort early in the morning and uh, Bernard, oh, new to the, okay, there you go, Max. Well, very nice to have you along. Thank you so much for taking the time out. And as Bernard says, welcome. Right, I'm gonna just get into what, what we're doing, if that's all right. This is us, we are WP Builds. We're basically, we just, oh, 
I'm going to do it. I'm going to say it. We drone on about WordPress. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. But that gag has been in the making for months. I'm glad you came oh. on this week, Johnny. Um, <laughs> let me take that away. Um, we talk about WordPress basically all the time. This is our website, wpbuilds.com. There's a bunch of links at the top. Um, the main piece of content is our podcast and the news that you're listening to now kind of thing. Talk to, um, to this chat. We'll come to that later. Click on this link, the subscribe link. There's a couple of forms here. This one will alert you when we release content. This one, the blue one, will alert you when we find out about deals. And man alive, I am not trying any harder to find deals, but there seem to be WordPress deals coming out of the wazoo. Um, I expect it's to do with the way things are going, you know, in the world and whatnot. Down here, you can join our Facebook group, subscribe to us on your podcast player of choice. There's about two and a half thousand in the Facebook group now. So it's, it's I think it's a great little community. It's very, very, very polite, which I'm very, very pleased is the case. Um, this link here is the news archive. And we're always on this one. I found a lovely picture of a toad this week. So I thought we'd we'd go for toads. That's this week's one is a toad. So let's get stuck into it. Feel free, guys, if you just want to chip in at any point, you know, interrupting in this scenario is anything other than rude. So please just do join us. Just chip in. Um, two pieces today. They're basically about exactly the same thing. The first one was over on uh, WP.org <laughs> called WordPress 5.4.1. And all it really says is that this was a security release. I updated. In fact, I didn't update. They all updated themselves automatically. I just got the, the slew of emails at stupid o'clock in the morning and checked them all first thing. And absolutely nothing had gone wrong. But WordFence really dig into this, what it was all about. And there were seven security issues. I confess I read this about about four or five days ago, and I've, it's kind of gone off my radar, really, what it was about. So unless unless any of the three of you have got something remarkable to say about the security and updates that we received for WordPress 5.4. Uh, I had a friend who said, um, I think it was Friday or Saturday night, said at least 10 sites they got had had been compromised through what was what he thought was this so and, uh, so i i updated all my sites right away then it was must be the ones that did an auto update because i got a slew of emails as well yeah yeah i always wake up to those emails because i don't quite know how that job occurs you know i don't know at what time of day they they provision that for whom but um anyway it happened but you try saying xss like seven times in a row come on xss 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 it's not easy so when i was recording the news early you'll notice look they're all xss 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 vulnerabilities but no i didn't have any problems so i was yeah. i was quite pleased with that um whoever you whoever this person is just just for the just for the sake of it if you're the sweden uh, guest welcome there's a little link you've got to press in the above the the thing the video that you're watching at the moment there's a button you've got to press which takes you to Streamyard which allows you to to be identified although you may want to Man's be Man Man ah okay thank you mm -hmm. you can see him can you ah because you're yep. able to look on the Facebook group at the same yeah. time yeah that's great thank you uh, well welcome from Sweden I'm pleased that you've joined us okay let's quickly move past the Kinster ad Kinster have actually been really really great. I think to me this this week they've they've jumped back on board for a t um, another period of advertising on the WP builds uh, weekly WordPress news and so although we we often joke about the amount of times I mention Kinster I am in, I only ever do it in jest but I am really pleased that they made that made that statement I think that was really nice they've joined us again for another period of time so I'm really happy about that okay the next little section is community and we've got a quite a lot of community bits and pieces this week first one was justin we always like yeah, chris you says kinster in the comments um should we have a block editor with a sort of connection to a grid system now i confess this isn't really my area this isn't really my wheelhouse if you like um i tend to just sort of play with you know a plain old css and make things work from page builders and things like that but i know that this is all the rage. Having the ability to do all of these clever modern things is absolutely fabulous. But um, Justin's kind of asking, should we have something which is locked into WordPress core, a system which we can all use locked into WordPress core? 
and um, points to this layout grid block experiment, which has been released. I think Automatic are actually responsible for this. And um, yeah, just interested to know whether this sort of thing should be in core or whether it should be you know, up to each person on an individual basis. I'm actually going to turn to Johnny on this one, largely because he's into making themes and things. What, what were your thoughts on this, Johnny? Uh, yeah, this is a real rabbit hole, honestly. Um, it's really important that the discussion has come up um, because, frankly, you know, whatever kind of CSS techniques you use, be it CSS grid or columns or flexbox or all that kind of cool jazz that can be done, um, essentially, you start off thinking this is simple. Um, a column system is basically some columns with some gaps in between that we call gutters, which is left over from sort of traditional graphic design, print industry stuff. Um, and then it starts to get a bit more complicated because if you look at sort of the first wave of grid systems like Blueprint, CSS, they're just cheap. So they would take off the last gutter on the right hand side and your last column would end up being a different width <laughs> to the rest of the columns, which is 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 problematic, obviously. Um, it's actually pretty simple maths to work out what the um, <clears throat> what the gutter should be and to keep your columns equal. It's I'm I'm I've barely scratched a C at GCSE maths and I worked that out. So that was, <laughs> that, that was all right. It might have taken me a couple of bits of paper and a little bit of fiddling around but yeah I've, I've figured that out it wasn't hard um so there is a there is obviously um sort of the whole css grid area which um is big and is definitely the way forward but um ie support is a bit mm -hmm. more um and frankly you know, for me as a commercial theme designer that gets engaged by agencies, companies to build themes, I can't turn around to them and say, well, it's a bitter pill to swallow, but those people on older browsers, they're just not going to get the same experience, but screw them because they're using old browsers. That's never an acceptable answer. Um, and it wouldn't be in my book, frankly, you know. Um, I've heard people say that. I've heard people, well, you know, if they're not using oh, yeah. the browser that supports this technology, well, I'm sorry, they're going to get a watered down experience. And I tell my clients this. Well, good luck with that, because I can't tell my clients that. And I personally don't accept that. Now, if you remember the dark days of, uh, of, of kind of CSS for me, which were doing things like coding a beautiful layout in CSS and then virtually having to recode the entire thing for like IE6. And, yes, remember those I remember days? that. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. We we oh. all are glad to see those days gone. Well, CSS Grid for me, and it comes up in the article as a suggestion. To me, it feels like two steps forward because you get this just amazing, finally, a brilliant layout engine where you can actually mm. reorder things. And it is superb. It really is worth a look. Mm. But then you go, ah, OK, to support those old browsers, I'm back to the old, ah, oh, and auto prefix uh, it won't really do it for you so it's kind of two steps forward one step back on css grid so my take on it is yes they should deploy um, a universal grid system no it should not be something like bootstrap even though it's ubiquitous mm -hmm. ubiquitous in the design industry it's just bloatware um, and it, frankly it, i know everyone loves it and i'm sorry if you do but you know 120k of css come on guys you know <laughs> jesus christ you know i'm used to like 2k and i'm worried about size um so yeah and that's my entire layout engine nice. so you know you, you kind of look at things like that so frankly the answer is yes i personally think there should be Developers should be able to easily override it with a filter and disable it if they wish mm. to. Um, I could ramble for hours on this, but I will leave you with this thought. The problem that you face when you get deep into this is bewildering end users yeah. with too many options. OK, so it does present an issue. And that's why I say it's a deep hole to go down because you start thinking, OK, so I'm using the block editor. I create a block. What if that block needs to be two columns the next one needs to be four and the next one needs to be one how do you actually control that mm. 
just think for a moment how you would actually do that. Now, personally, I think probably the best way for end users, and when I say end users, I just mean your everyday person that is logging into WordPress site to create content. They don't mm -hmm. care about options. They just want to create content fast yeah. and looks great. Yeah. yeah. I think um, personally, a good solution would be a predefined set of layouts effectively and layout combinations, which a developer could hook into and extend. Um, but if you give a client every option under the sun, and when you get into this, it gets tricky because you start going, well, do you give them control over the gutter widths, the gaps between? Yeah. These questions. These here, are the questions here, aren't spot they? Yeah. On. yeah. Spot on. Spot on. I mean, I can answer these straight for you. I won't. But definitely <laughs> number number six, the grid should. What should the grid be based on? Twelve pixel grid. Yeah. Yeah, the grid should definitely not be a pixel grid. Straight up, that's just yeah, that's a bad road to go down. It should be percent. Um, ideally. The number of columns should be filtered, just like my amazing system where I can have any number of columns. <laughs> Woohoo, <laughs> the innovation um, and combinations of them, in fact. Um, so 12 is all very well and good, but where's five in that? Yeah. Can't yeah. do it. Um, so that's why, really, that needs to be a filterable thing, um, potentially even on on page load it could easily be done i i on my system it's a php file masquerading as a css file and um, you okay. can just make it static or you can go well on this page i want five columns this page i want 12. you see we're already making it ridiculously complex and we've barely scratched the surface so i think yeah. that set of questions there are definitely the right questions to ask how anyone on track is going to come to an agreement on that Good luck. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's Good just luck. the beginning, isn't it? I think this was Mark Urain that put this out there. Um, but it does it does seem to be something that, you know, if you're gonna if you're gonna ostensibly throw a, an all-in-one does everything page builder type solution, it would be nice to have those things. <laughs> but I I think you're right though about the overcomplexity in terms of like how do you get the person I mean, who literally just wants to type paragraphs and stick an image over there and press publish. How do you get them on board? Bernard. Difficult. I mean, two things. Like the first point, what about responsive? Because it gets a whole lot more complicated. Hmm. And yeah. even page builders don't perfectly tackle that sort of issue sometimes. So, uh, and they might need something like that. So from the other point of view, once you get into layouts for whole pages or header and footer, yeah whenever Gutberg is ready to go into that area, because then it might be not enough to just have a block of, of, of items. So maybe it's a, a question that um, should be a simple version and an advanced version, like flipping a switch to keep it easy for like anybody who edits just content, because honestly, I mean, text images, it's not much more for many blog posts out there. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, the odd video maybe that's kind of about it you know mm -hmm. i think i think you're right you've got you got the thumbs up though from johnny there uh bernard with you i'm going to try yeah. and get a thumbs up now i'm going to try yeah. uh yeah. well i'll just give you one just off for nothing yeah you're right yeah, yeah. yeah. look you got two. <laughs> two look at that oh bernard's holding out <laughs> he's not he doesn't yeah. raise his thumb lightly oh no it's two thumbs. <laughs> <laughs> um, this takes me back to um like what what does what does a block editor think it is currently and currently it's trying to be everything so is it is it a blogger's tool or is it a page builder replacement or is it a full site builder or is it a widget or a customizer replacement and right now it does it's it's a bit of a mess in that in that sense but it could it could be solved there are ways to think about this that you know when you were installing wordpress there was a, there was a new sort of um, almost like a customer or a user avatar survey that told the told you that you could you could choose, you know, are you a blogger? Are you a site builder? And as a result, on ticking the certain boxes in, in install, it gave you or, or removed certain things that then you could globally turn back on. Um, so that, you know, you said, I'm a blogger, and it's not going to show you yeah. site building tools and grids and all this sort of stuff. And it got rid of loads and loads of the, the stuff you didn't need. And it yeah. gave you a, an experience based on that. Um, but so so I think I think if they if they identify their user personas, they could... They could maybe maybe figure something out around that to make the experience not just completely overwhelming, like Johnny said. 
Um, in terms of a grid system, I'm just going to give a shout out to Generate Blocks, which is by um, Tom Osborne, the creator of Generate Press. Yeah, let's and, see if we can uh, find that. Is it just Generate? What if I Google Generate? Generateblocks.com. Um, it actually take, we mentioned this a little while ago, I think, and it looked fabulous. Yeah. Yeah. Looks super, good. Super lightweight. I mean, it doesn't, it's like a really slim down set of things that it wants to achieve. Right? Block, three, three blocks. Right. One block is just a better button. One block is a better header. And then the final block is the grid, the grid block, which I believe is based on Flexbox. So we've um, got container, grid. Okay. There's the grid. It's, it's extremely Headline, uh, Wow. That's it. Just those four things. It would overwhelm a, a blogger, even. So. Yeah, 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 yeah. It, it seems to be gaining. T it's like a cult following in the Generate Press group at the moment. People are absolutely loving it and switching to it from page builders. But I've popped a link into the um, Facebook chat to um, one of our friends, Mike Oliver's uh, web page, where uh, he's done some quick tutorials for um, for Generate Blocks, so you can actually just see how it all works and fits together. Oh, it's nice. really interesting. So you know. And the reason the reason it's quite interesting in a way is because Tom uh, Generate Press had this problem already with his one of the modules of Generate Press called Sections, which yes. was made almost defunct when the block editor was announced. So he was determined to figure out a way to give people the same same kind of experience they had. And Sections was a very light page builder kind of thing inside Generate Press, similar, Johnny, to what you have done with um, classic sort of way of doing advanced custom fields, flexible yeah. content block, yeah, uh, where you make your own layout. So it's a similar sort of experience to that. But is, is this is this bit here, the grid block, is this where the, the beauty of this all lies? Is that yeah. really why you're installing this for this one? Um, and what yeah. are these numbers, yeah. the predefined numbers, or does this slider allow you to be granular? Can you go to like the slider or the predefined. OK, so, yeah. interesting. And you like yeah. it? You've you've tried it and you like it? Yeah, probably. it's awesome. Yeah, okay. and the, obviously the code output is extremely clean. And yeah, yeah, so it's yeah. going down very well in the performance Facebook groups, the WordPress yeah. performance Facebook groups, where uh, yeah. people wanting full control of stuff and wanting awesome performance that a page builder okay. sometimes doesn't give. Yeah, something this, uh, to play with. Yeah, this is a good find, um, Paul. And it's good you've brought it up. This has been on my radar now for not that long, actually, only a, a week or two. Um, and actually, you know, you look at something like this, not only does it illustrate the potential complexity, especially where you start looking at the sort of column options and all kinds of stuff, which highlights the issue that we talked about with um, end users. But I think more importantly, a lot could be learned from the time and thought that's gone into this um, for the core team and for anyone that wants to contribute through track on this, because, I can, uh, just from looking at these screenshots, I, a lot of questions have been answered here. How we differentiate between users, does it hide away in an advanced tab? Is it, um, is it a, a capability that you can add to a role maybe, as Paul suggested, mm. which is a very smart idea actually. Capabilities around this kind of stuff could be a godsend, but let's not forget, like anyone that's built websites for long enough knows if you give, an end user, an option, no matter how many times you tell them you don't need to click on that, you can just ignore that. That's for me to use. That's for the future. They will click on it. Right away. They'll click on it. <laughs> They'll break it. So, like, my I mean, that's like the always been. Where a head stays, don't click on the chicken, which going yeah, around. Yeah. <laughs> uh, don't yeah. look at the chicken, and the chicken have you failed. I mean, come on. It's like uh, teasing yeah. me to do yeah. it. Every By simply time, drawing attention time. to the fact that it shouldn't be clicked, you are in fact compelling them to click it. You Better are to say them. nothing. Just don't mention. Don't Better mention the elephant just, in the room. That's it. If you if they can't see it, they don't ask the question. Yeah. They don't so cap play capabilities. With it. Very interesting. Mm. Paul, um, yeah. does this? How does this actually? How to describe this? I've seen quite a lot of kludges in this kind of area where the UI is just a dreadful mess with, you know, the, the, the menu items kind of cropping up in all sorts of weird places, you know, and I'm looking at this and I'm thinking, okay, so if I'm interacting with this red one and I've got the, you know, the up and down arrow here, and does it, does it work? Is it, does it feel all right? I think, uh, as you know, with Tom Osborne and his products, he, anything that it, that shouldn't be there, or should be an extendable feature with code or another plugin or something. He doesn't tend to put it in. Right. And um, I know he's worked really close with Mike Oliver, who's a really good designer. 
And um, I think the, the best way to see it in action is to check out Mike's videos because you can see yeah. very quickly the the way that it is different than how it's been done so far okay. in the column. I think so far you've had column layouts in blocks. You've had some kind of column layout. Um, it's still a row. It's just it? a row, whereas yeah. this is more of a, an actual grid system. Yeah. You can... Uh, so it's going to step closer to the kind of page builder type layout with with all the things that you need. Oh well, this is great. I'm going to play with that at some mm. point very soon. Um, Mike Max, sorry, saying that looks interesting. Yeah, thanks for bringing that up. That all got spawned out of this this article, um, all from Justin Tadlock. So yeah, we we really delved deeply into that. Thank you, uh, everybody, for contributing. That was great. This is an interesting one. Let me just put this back up. I I, I don't know what I don't know if you're going to be sort of think this is a great idea, it, obviously everybody probably watching this is into building websites and, you know, sometimes that's profitable. Other times it's hard to make ends meet and you misjudge how much your project should cost and end up overrunning. So GoWP, who are a company who will maintain your websites for you, you bring your websites to them and say, look, can you just update it, and, you know, make sure it's all backed up and so on and so forth. So they've got this new service called um, Site Builds. It's here on the menu. You can just see it. it's pride of place. And basically, just scroll down. There you go. If, you, if you've got this kind of a budget, $1,300 per month, I, I don't know why the, the 2.5 is crossed out. Or maybe that's future pricing because it's brand new. Mm -hmm. They'll take on the responsibility of creating. I'm sure it's unlimited. Have I misjudged that? Is it unlimited? Probably with caveats. Mm -hmm. um, they'll just build the sites for you. So. If you're in the position that you've been building websites for years and years and that that whole proposition is tiring you out, but you've turned out to be really good at gathering up new clients, if that's your expertise, which I have to say, oh, you're, sh you're shaking your head. Yeah, me shaking my head as well. Um, this, could, this could be interesting. Yeah. I imagine problem. you can only work on one site at a time because yeah. some of these other the design services are like that. You can have unlimited, but you can only have one consecutive project at a time. Yeah. But um, having uh, spent a lot of time with the Codable team this last uh, couple of days with Bernard as well, has been hanging out with those at the Do at Vito and, and Jan's uh, DoP feedback event. I, I've seen that the Codable team have figured out how to do um, a proper coding and WordPress um marketplace that is vetted and has highly and has highly paid developers so yeah uh, they paid something between 80 to 120 dollars yeah. uh, an hour now this to me feels like uh, i don't know what work they've done in the background to prepare for it um and prior to talking to the codable guys i would just be like sounds okay good luck but have, having spoken to those and seeing the the levels of detail they go into to protect their developers and protect the reputation of the service um, I would be slightly concerned about like a fixed price site building service compared to a fixed price art working service. Yeah. Yeah. 100% yeah. yeah. on that, Paul. And um, if I may, the, just touching upon Codable, Codable, honestly, guys, like to me, is the only reputable marketplace out there. And Paul's right, they do vet their developers seriously. They do charge, you know, it's not $5 an hour. It's not, I'm not going to get into those sites. Yeah. Actually. You know the <laughs> yeah. sites I'm talking about. I'm not going to be mean, but, you know, you know the sites I'm talking about. No, they are reputable. This, to me, is an interesting proposition, but, my God, I agree with everything Paul said. To me, this is uh, uh, just scary. I, I mean, like, it's a great idea on paper, but... You know, there's no real talk of any sort of specking or quality of code or performance. You know, there'll probably there'll probably be a nice icon on there that says high performance WordPress websites. And it's like, well, yeah, OK, um, yeah, good luck. Um, but I just I would want to see more, as Paul said, meat on the bone and validation of the quality that you're going to get, you know, because yep. frankly, people could get really caught out on this. I hope they don't. And I'm not bad mouthing GoWP. I think it's an interesting business proposition. The problem lies, as we all know, in what the output's going to be. Um, it worries me. 
it, it, it worries me that people are going to get into trouble. I, I hope they don't. I hope this works out great and some really cool webs, websites get built and this builds into something great for them. But my God, they are really going to have to have their T's and C's tied up because they could get very badly burnt on this, I think. Yeah, I suppose it will all be in the T's and C's, won't it? You know, the number of concurrent, yeah, the number of concurrent builds, the, the depth of the site, you know, what are we talking here, 10 pages or something? Anyway, the, the, I guess yeah. it's I guess it's wait list only, you know, it hasn't come about yet. So you're expressing an interest. Uh, it's over at gowp.com forward slash builds. And if you're interested and, you know, you want to get out of building websites, but you like the industry, then, well, Go and see what you make of it. Next one is very simply I JavaScript mean, for. Oh, just, sorry, Bernard. Were you? For a yeah. Second. Yep. Please. I mean, at least the the people which are part of the company are partly known in the space, so maybe yeah. they have an idea behind it. So it's not that everybody there is an unknown uh, guy like they have been on the WP feedback uh, uh, hallway track. Some of them, and we didn't talk about that. Uh, but well, if it's limited in the in, in the scope, and uh, as they state, it's only elementary and deeper builder. So yeah. just putting a design into the world is maybe a different thing than building a whole site. Yeah, yeah, it's an interesting point, and you're right. I kind of glanced went through that. Yeah, no, point number four. So they're going to use a page builder in mm. order to do it. So maybe mm. they've just mapped out a bunch of templates, which they yeah. And on the about page, it, it's like uh, Robert Jacoby and others. Yeah. Um, yeah. Mm. In summary, from my perspective, it's just a very difficult job they've got ahead of them to get this right. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. We had the um, discussion about uh, funding developers like uh, some use people in India, so then it's fairly cheaper. And with all that ethical discussion in the last week, <laughs> a couple of times, and there is no fair answer to that. Uh, I mean, Codable is seriously a, a good thing. And if you want quality, that's fine. And it's important to have guys like that. On the other hand, if you pay the Indians or whatever above their market average and make a business working, so is, is it fair? Is it unfair? I mean, I don't know. Um, um, yeah, that discussion was hard, wasn't it? It was quite a good. I was watching that one, Bernard, actually on YouTube while I was doing some jobs. But the thing is, if you imagine Codable, uh, if someone in Codable is, uh, let's say, $100 a, a year. Oh, <laughs> uh, so, so, oh, sorry, I wondered what that noise was. It was your thingy. Um, say someone is $100 a year at Codable, you've got 12 hours for that price. Now, that person at Codable is very talented. So, what's happening? in between the 12 hours that you would get for that very talented person who can do work well and fast compared to the same price for unlimited work and the project manager. What's somewhere something has to, otherwise Codable would do that and it would make sense. They would be able to pay their $100 yeah. per month, uh, sorry, <laughs> per month, uh, per hour to the developers and still make it work. So. Yeah, like uh, like Chris said, big um, big company. You wouldn't think they'd do it by halves, but uh, I'm intrigued to know how they're going to make it work and maintain quality. So I'm probably repeat myself. I've actually got some very a, good um, comment from Facebook. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's nice. Thanks, uh, Chris and Leo for chipping in. I've actually got a I've got a podcast with Brad Morrison coming out in about ooh, about a month, and then we're going to do a webinar about the go uh, the go wp platform and probably the conversation will pivot to this i suspect now mm. um now that they've got this <laughs> hanging out there and we're all really intrigued as to what it's going to do and how it's going to pay for itself but yeah interesting you know th the thing is right there is a certain type of person and i am not that person but there is a certain type of person who is just dynamite at finding leads and converting leads and just they're just great at it you know they can walk into a room and before you know it they've signed up three people to build websites but they don't have the skills and so something like this a commodity you can sign up i've paid my 1200 dollars, whatever it is a month and there it is there's three more for you right i'll go into the next networking meeting and get another five you know it's just yeah. just not my area of expertise but i know some people mm. who yeah have, yeah but that, that's that. what's happening in this space currently yeah. look at all the, the the curses that are out there are telling you make six figures with recurring revenue make that like that and who does the size 
and who teaches them to do the site in a proper way yeah. or are they leading them making them crappy sites um then the, another guy chimes in to fix the technical side of it yeah yeah mm. who knows? my expectation is that we're going to find out more in the terms of conditions and i suspect the the the, the, the constraints on these projects are going to be fairly locked down mm -hmm. and um mm -hmm. you know uh, but chris chris i've already shown this comment but chris who i know is you know he has a a, a service which very much mirrors what GoWP do. He's obviously looking at what they're doing and um, doesn't imagine that they're going to do things by half. So yeah. anyway, let's stay tuned. Uh, around about the 7th of July, I think we've got Brad Morrison on, so that's interesting. Okay, I'm going to quickly sh shift through these just to say if you're into JavaScript and you like talking about it, um, they're looking for speakers at Zach Gordon's uh, JS for WP conference, which is online. I believe it was always online. You know, it's not one of these events that's become online uh, in the recent past. Speaking of that, um, I don't know if any of these are still available. And, and unusually for an online event, they've got a cap on how many seats are available. But WordCamp Europe, you can register. Last time I looked, they were selling out really quickly. And when I say selling, they were going because they're completely free. They've got a contributor day. Is it zero, Bernard? Are there none left? No, there's 1,320. Oh, sorry. Okay. Sorry. I no, was no, looking at it. Zero one, uh, oh, yes, yes. Zero to that. Yeah, right. Yeah. Um, it's completely free. There's a contributor day. Don't quite know how that's going to work. I imagine that'll be quite an interesting experience trying to get people into the I right think silo. The contributor day is already. Oh, is it? Okay. So forget that. Uh, you, but when you signed up for it, you had to choose with the preference of where you'd want to go first and where you'd want to go second. Speaking of which, although we, oh, sorry, I just sort of occurred to me that I should probably be showing the screen, although there's not a lot to see. Um, WordCamp US has also, in the time since I published this, uh, gone online. They've decided that their event in St. Louis, I want to say, that's right, isn't it? In St. Louis is no longer a live event. They're going to go completely online. So that's look good. out for, yeah. Look out for tickets for that. The interesting thing about this is WordCamp Europe is now probably going to be full of all sorts of people who would not have made it. And what I mean by that is people who, for a whole variety of reasons, wouldn't have got on a plane to Portugal. Uh, maybe the cost implications, maybe the time implications. And now 3,000 plus people, essentially, who managed to get in before they were cut off by the numbers selling out are going to be involved. And I just think that'll be interesting, interesting to see. And so huge, huge undertaking to get 3,000 people organized with however many tracks. So keep your eyes peeled for that. Let's see if this one... Yeah, it's just interesting with all those conferences going online, like we had last week the, with the feedback one, and the virtual hallway track which was mentioned several times. So maybe for people who didn't uh, get it, they had the uh, uh, Jitsi channels for virtual hangouts. And in some, uh, on some days we had quite interesting discussions till late night, at least for Europe European uh, <laughs> talkers. So it's interesting how they build upon that for future events. And I think uh, Agency Transformation Live this week that's yeah. similar stuff, just different technology behind it. And it's very interesting where all this goes and um, and what of that will stay for the future, even once yeah. all the restrictions are lifted. Yeah, I think it is interesting. I'm just going to put this comment up because it's nice. George, uh, who I believe right at the start said mm -hmm. he was from Cyprus. Was that right? Have I got George right? Yes. Uh, he he says, says that one of those right. people is him. I presume he's meaning he would possibly not have gone and this has mm. enabled him to go it will be good. interesting to see yeah really good right there's just no there's no downside to the to the to the, the the increasing of the community that can attend these events that's all good um be interesting to see if there's a component of this going forward i can't for the life of me imagine that the the future of word camps is online i imagine the future of word camps is still in you know in person events but it'd be yeah. interesting if there's a larger component uh, live streaming of events and hallway tracks and, you know, maybe even think, you know, people sitting actually in the hallway uh, contributing in that way. What are you, what are you laughing at? Oh, Look Leo. at Leo's comment. Sorry, it's a question. That's okay. <laughs> What's he Sorry. put? Uh, which one? Uh, yeah, the this last one? one, like about his, yeah, Starlink and his satellites. I mean, it's ob <laughs> ob obviously it's just a, uh, Totally fixated on those uh, satellites. <laughs> Have you actually seen this guy's <laughs> website? No. 
Sure. Uh, honestly, you just go check. It is a thing of beauty, right? So james.darfinian.com forward slash satellites. I don't know where he's pulling the data from, but he's he's mapped the satellites going around Earth. Yeah, I've seen it and he's like mapped it. them onto a globe, and there they come. And I, the other day, went out. <laughs> Did I tell you this story? The, the Starlink satellites, there's about, I don't know, 44 of them or something yeah. that travel in a direct in a straight row. line. Yeah, in a dead straight line. Well, a, a curve, an arc. And um, and I looked on his website and saw that they were going basically directly over my house. So that night at about 10 o'clock at night, I got myself out there, you know, a cup of cocoa, staring up at the sky, checking out and everything. Anyway, nothing, complete crickets. <laughs> but no, it was only when I went back inside, I realized that you could, you know, there's a certain parallax to this. The satellites are up here. The Earth is down here. And actually, when I tilted it so that it was flat, the satellites were going over northern France. <laughs> <laughs> Close. <laughs> but well, honestly, the the if you look at it, you load the site and you'll see what I mean. It's about three hundred yeah. miles gap. If you've got it at a certain anyway, I just felt like a real chump. Yeah, you can <laughs> the angle of the earth. Oh. Yeah, but exactly. But don't get fresh air, a little bit of exercise. It's just good for you. Yeah, it was good. Anyway, go and check that site out because it really is good. Right, I'm going to shift it on a little bit. Um. We're kind of running out of time. I won't do this particular article, even though I'm just going to show it. I'm just giving myself the the mental nod. I haven't got time for that one. I'm really sorry, guys. Tom Fanelli, I think, is going to be joining us at some point in the near future. WPMU Dev now do email and DNS, if that's your thing. If you're up on their hosting, you can now do your DNS and your email with them. This, though, I do want to mention, because this is nice. Friend of the podcast, Sebastian Webb. Um, who has this really great product if you are not into doing the CSS yourself. He's got this fabulous point-click, drag-move kind of thing called Microthema. Not for everybody, I'm sure, but um, great product for those of you who are learning and just want to do it simply. He's integrated it with Oxygen, this uh, page builder, and uh, it just looks really great. He's obviously put a lot of hard work into it. It's really good. So I would my, my gambit here would be go and watch this video. It's about 12 minutes long, and you'll see how all of that works. And I just like him as a person. Works like great with Beaver Builder, too. Yeah, yeah, it works. I think Elementor, Beaver Builder, and now Oxygen. I think that's where we're at. Um, you can have Beaver Builder, Oxygen, Elementor on the screen, so you can modify the, the actual Beaver Builder website at the same time as using his technology to to customize the uh, the CSS. Especially so, helpful with response to previews and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, 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 with the grid view. I Specs look really good. Um, one of my favorite little plugins at the minute, because I managed to get it on a lifetime deal and my form solution doesn't need to be that complicated. I got this thing called Fluent Forms. They've, in, they've integrated um, PDFs. It was just a thing which was lacking in it. So I thought I'd mention that. You can now send PDF receipts for Stripe payments and so on and so forth. Now, this one is the probably the, the next one of significance. Yoast 14.0 indexables. <laughs> Uh, so I noticed that Yoast updated to 14.0. Here we go. That was on the 21st of April. So that was the real piece of news. They got this new technology in indexables. Then I noticed within a couple of short days that they've updated to 14.0.1 and then 14.0.2. Not being a Yoast user, I don't really know what calamity befell everybody, but um, did, was there some disaster that occurred or was it all plain fairy? Why have they updated so quickly? Anybody? I I use Yoast um, begrudgingly, um, always exploring new technologies in that department. <laughs> um, but it's quite alarming the rates that they have to punch out these releases. I can't, it, you know, I'm just going to say it, I'm just surprised that virtually every damn time I log into a WordPress website, even if it was yesterday, there's a blooming update for Yoast. I can't tell you um, what went wrong here. I haven't experienced any issues myself at all, what triggered those um, point updates. Um, but, yeah, I, I, I just I just wish they'd bloody test. <laughs> the, um, the, re <laughs> the reason that I'm saying this is because I have in the back of my mind a thread somewhere in a Facebook group with somebody complaining that something had broken and then I pieced it together thinking, oh, okay, and then I saw those couple of updates. Uh, that must have been it. But if nobody's had anything, problem, no, good. Well, anything. 
Okay. Well, anyway, they've got this new technology called indexables, um, and this piece allows you to read it. Sadly, I haven't got time to go into all that just at the moment. However, I do want to draw attention to this. This is going to go really loud in my um, in my ears, so I'm just going to quickly mute it. Stop. This is my very good friend, David Wormsley. Look at him. He's right, merged with the, the WordPress. David's merged himself into the repo somewhere. Look at him. He's totally <laughs> green screened himself right into the repo. It's absolutely <laughs> great. It's lovely. It's like that. the Matrix. <laughs> 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 he's um he's done this lovely video about beaver builders tool called assistant when i say beaver builder it literally has nothing to do with the page builder it's this tool which well if i just scan through maybe at some point we can grab an image yeah there, there you go oh crikey and a big advert it, it's a panel which you click a button it's like a pencil icon which hovers to the top right of the screen or wherever else and you can dock it left dock it right and it's just a way of interacting with wordpress admin without going into the admin so you can update images content titles meta tags and they've got this api the intention is that it's a tool to be used by developers to build their own stuff into um, and it's a quick interface for doing things that you don't want to spend like honestly the amount of time i waste going to the post page finding the correct post da -da 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 -da, you know it's just point click nonsense Nice tool, and David sums it up. And it's free really as well. So just go, yeah. and, just go and check out David's video because you, you'll see some nuggets in there, gold nuggets of things that like, oh, yeah, I'm not too fussed about that. Oh, hang on. That's really cool. I really yeah. like that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, most of it is exactly what you'd expect from the admin. And I just, I was kind of thinking, well, it fe it felt like what David was hoping to do here was get this get this piece of kit to the point where it was stable enough and that he knows it well enough. And then essentially obfuscate the the need for your clients to, to log into the WordPress admin and get all confused by everything that's going on in there. Just have everything in this little side panel. And I know David's trust in the guys over at Beaver Builder is very, very high. Uh, he, he really likes what they do and everything that they, you know, that their roadmap is, is how, how should we describe it? They've taken the approach of less features, more stability, uh, oh. as opposed to loads of features and less stability. So uh, an interesting approach. So there we go. That's a nice little... I think little... Um, this kind of thing is always fascinating to see because in a way it's... It's where innovation in WordPress should be. I'm yeah. just going to probably get quite controversial here. The problem is, is that um, a lot of innovation just gets completely stifled in WordPress. There's too many big voices with too many strong ideas. And you know what? When someone's free of the shackles of that and creates something like this, you go, whoa, okay, now that is what you call a great editing experience for an end user. Mm -hmm. And there's so many lessons that can be learned from, you know, real intelligent thinking around this kind of thing. You know, frankly, if they want WordPress to continue, genuinely, innovations just like this need to be looked at carefully and, and considered as potential core options. Um, I would I would be so excited to start seeing, you know, people like that author there, you know, and he's probably fought his own battles with core and lost. And this is what happens. So, yeah. you know, uh, it's it's fascinating to see. And I just I really wish sometimes that a lot more people would look to people innovating like this and think, well, where could we go with the WordPress admin? What do users really need instead of worrying about the tiniest of micro interactions uh, on an aging admin interface, you know? Yeah, um, it, it is a very, yeah, but, very uh, different interface. Yeah. yeah. But there are several routes in the same direction, kind of, with all the REST API or GraphQL or whatever and the whole gem stack discussion and front ID, which was backed by automatic. I think we had the news last week or week, the week before. So there are many different things going on. Uh, and I think the more an API for WordPress emerges, the more creative solutions out of the current admin we might see. Mm -hmm. That would be great. You know, that that's, that's what I want to see, frankly. The, um, this is the the project over on the .org repo. I mean, it's it's relatively new. It's been around for a while. Very few very few um, installations, but you know, five 
five five star reviews. They won a plug in award for it as well. Yeah, they did. They won that Lollapalooza or something, didn't they? Was that it? I yeah. think so. I don't know if it's Lollapalooza because um, isn't that like a oh music festival? That's the music festival. <laughs> There's something which sounds <laughs> they've something robbed like the that, name, yeah, haven't they? Whatever Palooza it is, it's yeah, yeah, it was something <laughs> Palooza. <laughs> Yeah, Beaver Can't Palooza. Be Beaver. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was a, a com competition set up by Beaver Builder to yeah. come up with the yeah. best. Maybe they won it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but uh, you get the idea here from the image. You know, home. This is something to do with posts and pages. Here's your media library comments. Can't think what that one is. Obviously, something to do with taxonomy here. I think as well. And anyway, interesting project. One thing it's I really like about it, right, is as saw in David's videos, is you can you can find the different pages and you can favorite them. So if you know you were ah. always editing this page or this post, whatever, you you've kind of you're doing your search and you just and you're typing and it's doing Ajax connections to pull in the the posts, and you can find them. So you know when you're trying to find a post yeah. and, and yeah. you have to search and press return and then yeah. and, you, and maybe it's on page three. Who knows? You know you, you've got none of that sort of stuff and. And then you can hover over one of those links that you can see in the graphic there. And you've got, you know, edit view, edit in Beaver Builder, edit in the different page builder. But the way they've built this is so, like you said, other plugin creators, so the creator of Elementor, if they wanted to, yeah, 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 yeah. add their own thing into Assistant to make to make it uh to, to give further Elementor functionality into Assistant. It's not it's, it's not tied to be it for other people to hook into and do their fun yeah. stuff. What are yeah. these little colorful things? I remember seeing that. Is this some you just assign colors like you do on the Mac yep. Finder? Or Again, you know, if you had yeah. things like e commerce pages, you know, you might think, right, or, my, or maybe you were kind of um, doing a, a, a page and like, I wonder which pages I've, I've finished the content on so far, right? And you yeah. could sort of go, red means I've still got a lot of work to do, orange means I've nearly finished it, or green. Or you could say to your kind of colleague, can you go and sort out all the red pages for me? And I'll do the blue ones or something. It's Brilliant. Really, nice. really cool. Yeah. And it really gets out of the way. It literally collapses to an icon, yeah. probably about a centimeter square, which just sits icon. Yeah, it yeah. just goes away. It's really unobtrusive. Um, but it that it, even the icon though, you can put anywhere you like on the screen. I think you can just dump it wherever you want and mm. it remembers where it wants to be. So it's quite a nice little project. Anyway, well done, the guys at Beaver Builder. Mm. We certainly like the look of that. Uh, next thing then, uh, what have we got? What have we got going all the way back up here? That's the that's the plugins and themes bit. Next stuff is deals. We got this page over at um, where is it? That one there. And there's so many deals on at the minute. I, I won't even go through them, but essentially a, a small thing because I stumbled up in in, in Facebook at some tweet. If you're getting VP reset, uh, take a close look and uh, at the automatic backup of your database because part yes. of it is stored in your database, so yes. it can uh, go very wrong uh, and the sites DB can explode within a short time. I guess they're working on a solution for that, and there's an option to disable it. Just be carefully and take a close look uh, because it seems to have taken down some sites. Yeah, this WP reset one, I saw exactly the same comment. Somebody saying that they've got like two gigs of backup database tables somewhere. I can't remember exactly, but there was a whole ton of stuff. And the and database. One eight gigabytes. Oh, yeah, it went down from eight gigabytes to 200 megabytes or something when they cleaned out the uh, WP reset. Uh, mess. So yes, be, be mindful of that. Um, give WP. We had Michelle Frischette on last week. They've got forty percent off. And then if so, which looks interesting. I know Paul is a big advocate of dynamic content on websites. Paul, would, did we talk about this last week? And I don't mean that we're going to go into it now. But would you would you advocate if so as a half decent solution, or would yeah. you say? Yeah. For the other ones instead, like I've, Logic. I've done some talks on on the other one, um, the other, the main competitor to If So, which is Logic Harp. I've also done a talk using If So, and the main difference between the two of them, um, If So is more basic. But when I say basic, it's covering eighty percent of everyone's needs most of the time. And uh, what Logic Harp is able to do is it's it's almost you can build conditions upon condition upon condition. So you can create a scenario that if this happens and then that happens and then this happens. And that's how you do it with if so. But with logic you can say if this happens and this happens and this happens, that's target number one. And then you can say another new condition is has target number one been met? So you can combine all oh, okay. on top. Right. Um, but but if so on AppSumo for forty nine dollars for five sites or I think ninety dollars or so for fifteen sites is 
very powerful tool. Um, okay. We were talking about it earlier, I think, Nathan, um, about pricing tables. You know, so does your highest price, should your highest price go on the left or should your highest price go on the right yeah, in the pricing yeah, yeah. table? Yeah. Why not try, um, actually, we were talking about split testing in that, in that actually, weren't we? But, but, um, but yeah, if so, can can basically sort of say that if you come from this website, put this over here. If you come from that website, put it over here. Or, or if you come from Facebook or Google, hey, welcome Facebook users. You know, this is an exclusive deal for people coming from the Dopey Feedback event. And you can send people from the Dopey Feedback event and then have, you know, a special offer for those people just by detecting where they've come from. Really cool. Yeah. Okay. And, uh, uh, what else have we got? Deposit photos, free stock images. Anyway, go to this particular post, the post that we're on about, and there's just a ton of them over there. And this this is like unprecedented. I've never seen so many deals going on at the same mm -hmm. time. I just wonder if it's the time that we're in. But um, speaking of security as we were earlier, there were obviously loads to do with WordPress core, but there were some bigger write-ups. So I'm just going to say Ninja Forms. That's a huge form plugin. They had a, a mm -hmm. high severity. So these are all coming from WordFence. Uh, high security vulnerability. There was another one called Real Time Find and Replace plugin, same deal, and LearnPress, which I guess is a learning an LMS. Don't know, but I'm assuming it is. We spoke this week with um, with Michael Short on the podcast. We uh, we talked about his Waz Pro solution. If you're into building things with WP Ultimo, but you want to take them a little bit further. That's our podcast for this week. And he was kind enough to give us a uh, five licenses. If you click on this thing here, giveaways at the top, you can win one of five licenses. Uh, you know, it's the usual thing. Share it on the, all over the universe and you get more entries. Um, this is using Raffle Press, by the way, if you've ever, ever come across that one. It's quite a nice little plugin for doing just that. No jobs for you this week. And not a good time for jobs. No, I think we're going to be slimming down on jobs, aren't we? We've got on Michelle Frichette's uh, combined list website somewhere. But... Yeah, we mentioned that last week, didn't we? Let's go for these two just to finish it off. That's all the WordPressy stuff that I've got. So now we're on to the non wordpress -y stuff. I think Leo will be interested in this, although I'm sure he's caught sight of this piece of news already. Uh, wow, that is some cookie warning. Look at that. Um, Facebook adding the option to charge for live streams. Ooh, where did you go? You've refreshed because I accepted the cookie policy. Okay, fair enough. And now you're showing me lots of ads. Brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> That's why. Um, they're going to they're gonna give you the ability to charge for events such as you're witnessing at the moment. So this is completely free. We're piggybacking off Facebook's infrastructure and capability to, you know, have the audience and the reach and everybody's always logged on. But until now, no capability to charge for it, as far as I know anyway. But they're they're going to offer that up as a as a new business model. I I cannot see this not being successful for Facebook. They've got everybody's bombs on seats already. We were talking before we clicked go on this live that it's quite surprising in a way that a lot of these virtual summits haven't, you know, that Facebook haven't cornered that market, in all honesty. Mm. Yeah, very surprising. I mean, you know, the the team that they must have on board, uh, surely this kind of thing has been brought up as a suggestion more than once. And I am just amazed because they are kind of 75% of the way there. This feels like, a, you know, a, a someone's a Wednesday afternoon project, frankly, um, <laughs> yeah. this presentation. Um, so, you know, I, I think that I think you're right. They can't fail. It's a great idea. And frankly, everyone apart from me has a Facebook account. So you kind yeah. of got the market. Yeah. Um, yeah. I do have a secret one, but I couldn't possibly reveal it. So. Yeah, no, no, but, people, uh, people would need to be shot. Oh, as soon as, oh, yeah. Yeah, so. oh, look yeah. at this. Look, we've got a nice comment in here from uh, Leo who says, uh, "How? what price to watch Nathan Paul and Vito? How can you put a price on that? Eight pence. Uh, no, he sent me a private message. He's willing to pay a thousand dollars. A thousand dollars. Okay. All right. I'll I'll thanks, take thanks, that. Leo. Okay. Thanks, Leo. That's cool. Yeah. Great. I'll. I'll wow. All right. <laughs> I'm sure he's not being truthful. But uh, let's do it. <laughs> go for the last one. This is. Ah, oh, don't you? Why do that? What? Sorry. I'm just going to show my screen. What? So I've. I. I 
I went to this site, navigated to that site, and then navigated away for a couple of minutes. And now we're back, and that's what you get. Is is it me, or is that just terrible, terrible UX? Uh, it is me, isn't it? Nobody it's else cares. Advertising on a on a live podcast, though. Look, look at it, though. Look, now we've got to dismiss this, and we've got to dismiss this anyway. Search engine journal uh, telling us that Google Meet is now free for all users. I, I, I'm guessing that you have to have a good G Suite account and pay them some cash. All you need now is a Gmail account. Don't know if this is going to be the kind of thing that's around till you know till COVID is over. But Google Meet is, I think, their enterprise solution. It's their Zoom. Mm. I believe. Yep. Although I could be wrong. I mean, yeah, the of Hangouts, aren't they? I think is that right? Hangouts. I think this is, isn't this our? Oh, okay. is a I thought this was their enterprise one because it was attached previously to. Um, here we go. Ordinarily, meetings would be limited to sixty minutes for the free, but Google is not enforcing that limit until after the thirtieth of September. I don't know how many people you can get on the call, but I think it's a lot. Um, mm. So if Zoom is ticking you off. And you just can't cope with it. And although it's pretty easy for people like you and I to use, it's actually get my get my mother to use Zoom. It's not going to happen. Uh, and if it's all in the browser, it might might be slightly more simple. Anyway, there it is. That's that's what we got for you this week. Anybody want to say anything before we end it? Please. Well, I'll leave you. Uh, I'll leave you with a, an amusing thought on parents and Zoom. Um, I kind of have been guiding my mum into installing it, which was quite a big thing. She had never installed anything on her phone before, so she thought she was a tech genius that far. <laughs> and then I, then I sent her her first message on WhatsApp. She responded by text message telling me that she had received my WhatsApp message. I yes. think she missed the point. Yes. <laughs> True story. That's so good. Oh, that's so good. For me, it's a question of like really either inaudible or really loud. Which button do I, which button do I press? Which button do I press? No, the, it says uninstall. No, 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 not that one. In, install. Yeah, press the install. One. What the one under the install? No, just press. Just <laughs> honestly, it's just a comedy of errors. We had a Zoom call last oh. night where we tried to do a Zoom, but one of those quiz evenings, and man, it was just so interesting watching. What? Let's say anybody who was in charge of the screen who was under a certain age, it all worked perfectly. All the people were in the middle of the viewport, like you know, there they were. But then there was a certain. I, I'm sorry, I'm not trying to be ageist, if that's a thing, but. The, the older people, like they were, you know, they were like over here uh, or up here. And it was just, yeah. just priceless. Down a bit, down a bit. Oh, no. Anyway. It's usually what, sort of like this, isn't it? Like, hey! exactly, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly that. Bless you. See your chin. You can see your elbow. Yeah. Um, ah, right. There we go. That's all we got for you. So just before we finish, if there's anything happening for you this week, if you want to drop a URL, plug something, feel free. Let's start with Bernard. Oh, well, no, not this week. I mean, it's, it's a bad name. Look at it and be fine with it. <laughs> <laughs> and I had some people this week in the live chat, I think. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, I'll tell you what we didn't mention, excuse me, because we, we should have done, is uh, Lee Jackson. He's got his event. I was going to uh, mention it anyway. So. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you what, I'll leave it to you. But uh, just best of luck. Best of luck with all that. Uh, I know there's a lot of moving parts that uh, you want to to be all hanging together. So fingers crossed for you. Uh, what about you, Johnny? What Anything happening this week? Uh, I'm on that last 20% of that project that feels like 80%. So uh, I'm just kind of looking forward to getting that finished up. I'm sure the client is as well. Um, and I would really, really like to spend just a week or two um, just doing personal projects. As I mentioned before it started, uh, I feel fortunate that I've actually had project work on during this period being self-employed. But uh, now I want it to finish so I can play with my toys, basically. Yes. Oh, you know. that'd be lovely. Yeah. Well, <laughs> fingers crossed for you in that case, Johnny. Yeah. Hopefully you get through your, your 20, you. 20 you. stroke 80 percent, and then you can start playing with the things that you actually want to play Yay. with. Uh, and yeah. there is the link that Paul's provided agency transformation.live. Um, I don't know what the model I know that I have 
paid for a, a ticket for the you know for the real event which then transformed into a an online event i don't know if there's a capability at this stage to hop in do you know paul if that can I'd be love done? That. Yeah, at the moment i'm just taking a look at it yeah so it starts on wednesday i think and um day one is on wednesday and um i'm a speaker so i shouldn't so again again so i did do <laughs> feedback uh, but I don't know. Am I a speaker? Because I've already spoke. So I've already said it. So it's pre-recorded. So I was a spoker. You, you spunken. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you haven't spooked your audience. I'm never going to say that one ever again. <laughs> you said uh, it, and as soon as I said it, I thought, what have I done? <laughs> yeah, yeah, never mind. We can, we can edit it out. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> yeah. I um, no, last year was probably, <laughs> not even probably, it was the fa most favourite event I've probably ever been to as a grown-up. And oh. uh, so obviously it was it was turned to online this year, which was heartbreaking for Lee because... But he's 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 created a pretty cool um, experience. I'm looking at in the back end at the moment with a lobby, and then you've got the different days, and then you've got different tables. Uh, so, for instance, if you are sort of a designated to be sitting on a particular table, then at certain points, you you can not have to try and jump into a room and and see you know 60 or 80 or 100 people all trying to talk. You can just go see the short table. With just a couple of people, I'm looking at the online lobby at the moment. So it's it's got some similarities to some of the stuff that Vito and Jan did with their with their Dopey Feedback event last week, which was absolutely awesome. Uh, well done, Jan and Vito and all the people who were involved in that. There's also I'm looking in there. There's a cool thing called the Green Room, which is um, which is which is where uh, the speakers can go and have their own little chat. And uh, and there's, you know there's extra special virtual nice food in there perhaps you know we can have <laughs> virtual caviar and that sort of thing so I'm, I'm really looking forward to that um, if if you, it's a, it's an agency specific event really so it's a it's a if you're an agency at the moment and you're kind of worried about what's going on which you probably should be then it is it wasn't a fantastic event last year and I, and I'm pretty confident having seen what Vito and Jan did this last week. That this is going to be pretty awesome as well. So I'm really looking forward. To, I'm looking forward to the hallway chat again. To be honest, the nice. hallway chat. Nice. Yeah. Uh, the the always, always the, the always acerbic <laughs> Leo Mendel. It has an awesome lineup. An awesome lineup of speakers and Paul Thank Lacey. You, um, yeah. Thanks for that. <laughs> and then uh, and then Chris. Uh, oh. Look at Paul all over the talk circuit. He'll be on Oprah next. <laughs> You've got to do a catch <laughs> Vito, though. Well, that was great. Thank you. We really enjoyed this week's episode. Really nice to have Bernard, Johnny, and Paul. Thanks for joining us. If you don't mind, guys, as always, I'll just you know mute the mics and whatnot, but just stick around and uh, we'll say our goodbyes after the fact. So thanks for joining us. Really appreciate it. Do you know what's interesting? Because whenever we say goodbye, we always get a slew of like goodbye comments, which are now not coming just because because <laughs> they're not going to this time. But if you're about to write goodbye, uh, we probably won't see it. So um, <laughs> bye bye for now. Yeah, look, Leo, quick, great talk, guys. Great talk, great talk. Right. See you later, guys. Have a yeah. have a nice day. Where is the button that I need? It's that one.